Hello everyone, this is Dudley Savage in Plymouth wishing you all a very good morning as you join me for another programme as prescribed. If you like music that's melodic and at times nostalgic, then do stay tuned. We've just that very kind for you from now until the news at 8 o'clock. Our welcome guests this Sunday morning are the members of the Carlton Main Frickley Colliery Band. Well, conducted by Robert Orton, they opened the programme with a spirited rendering of the march, Sharanga, and they play it at the special request of the family of Mr and Mrs Sid James of number 6 High Street in Pembroke Dock. Mr and Mrs James are celebrating their diamond wedding today, and all their children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren send their love. <laughs> Splendid start to our programme. Thank you, Robert Orton and the Carlton Main Frickley Colliery Band from Yorkshire. And now some music played on the theatre organ here in the ABC Theatre, in the very centre of this modern, rebuilt city of Plymouth. And you might like to know that Plymouth Hoe is only a few hundred yards from here. If you stand on the Hoe, you can look out to sea and to the Eddiston Lighthouse, the flashing beam that guards and guides the sailor. Gilbert and Sullivan had a soft spot for this corner of the country, and they often came this way on holiday. So let's include a well-known something of theirs, a selection from Ireland. I've a request from Castletown, Isle of Man, from Mrs. Marion Batchelor, who sends loving greetings to all her friends at Bolingi in Cornwall. And I mustn't forget to mention Rex Harper and family and Marion Vincent. The music is also for the staff and patients in St George's Hospital in Lincoln and for everyone in Ward G3 at Hackney Hospital in London.
some favourite tunes from Ireland. I'm delighted to welcome back again Robert Orton and the members of Carlton Main Frickley Colliery Band. They play a cheerful item, Hawaiian hoedown, for a listener in their own county of Yorkshire, Miss Harris of number 11 St John's Way in Harrogate. Miss Harris is now confined to the house, having lived a very active life. Well, a very good morning to you, Miss Harris. Your good friend Mrs. Grigson at number 13 sends warmest wishes, and she hopes this tune will cheer you up, as indeed do we all. Hawaiian hoedown, and very nice too. We've been hearing gay and light-hearted music so far, but now for something more serious in character. Dr Joseph Parry's great hymn tune, Aberystwyth. Writing from Preston in North Wales, Mrs E M Saville sends love to her husband. At the time of writing, Mr Saville was a patient in Abigail Hospital, but it's more than likely he's now home again. A very good morning to you both, Mr and Mrs Saville. During the past week, Mr. and Mrs. Allen of Alston Street in Hartlepool reached their 50th anniversary. Golden wedding greetings to you both, Mr. and Mrs. Allen, with love from Frida and Eva and all your friends at Oxford Road Baptist Church. I have a call for the West Country, for Mrs. Alice Silliphant of Grimscott Estate near Bewd. With all love on your recent 89th birthday, Mrs. Silliphant, from your daughter Annie of Bridge Rule and from all the family. In the Midlands, I'd like to include 90 years old Mrs. G. Lawton, Auntie Nan to everyone, at present in Hortonville Hospital in Newark. All your friends in the village of Egmonton send their affectionate greetings, Mrs Lawton. They're all thinking of you. And there's a request from North Wales. It's for Mrs Fanny Davies of Ruthin, who'll be celebrating her 79th birthday tomorrow. Like many of our listeners, Mrs Davies is confined to the house, and I'd like to send her love from her nephew Robert and Kathleen and Hugh.
The Welsh hymn tune Aberystwyth, played by the Carlton Main Frickley Colliery Band from Yorkshire, from near Pontefract. And like the members of the band, the composer of that tune, Joseph Parry, was himself a coal miner. He worked in a South Wales mine at the early age of ten. I'm going to switch on the organ again to play two of Ivor Novello's tunes, Rose of England and The Leap Year Waltz. I hope Mr Harry Pocket may be listening in Ward 9 at Cheltenham General Hospital. Every good wish to you, Mr Pocket, and to your wife and family from your good friend May. The postmark on her card is Gravesend, Kent. And there's a second request for Cheltenham for Mrs Ivy Yulden, who is confined to her home there at 88 Cromwell Road. Well, very much love to you, Mrs Yulden, from your sister Kathleen, Miss Kathleen Cottage, uh, who lives quite near you, I see, in Horsefair Street, Charlton Kings. <laughs> The euphonium soloist with the band is Robert Davidson, and he's going to play a very familiar tune for us, Drigo's Serenade. Well, both the tune and the instrument he plays will more than interest young Andrew Wilson. Andrew plays the euphonium. He's a member of the school brass band, 
Ellen Silver Band and has been accepted to play in the Remy Band. Well, all your family send their love and best wishes, Andrew. They're all delighted with the good news. Now, I've had a very nice letter from your grandmother, Mrs Doris Wilson, writing from Beechwood, Sarby Bridge in West Yorkshire. She'll be listening as usual and wishing you well, of course. And sharing the music with you, Andrew, is Mrs Osborne, one of our blind listeners at Daw Vale Home in Dawlish, South Devon. A very good morning to you, Mrs Osborne. Much love and best wishes from your good friend, Mrs Gammon, writing from her home in Dawlish, number three, Corriton Close, not far from the sea. <laughs> Drigo Serenade, and our warm thanks to Robert, Robert Davidson, for his enjoyable euphonium solo. The band now play a request for a group of regular listeners in Lancashire, the members of Thornton Cleveley's Trefoil Guild. Mrs Diggle, writing on their behalf, says, For the past 27 years, every second Wednesday, come rain, snow, wind, fog or sun, members of our Trefoil Guild, older branch of the Girl Guide Association, have visited Ward 10, Wesham Park Hospital in Kirkham, where we have adopted ten long-term patients, one in particular who has been on our list for 17 years, taking them some small gift, always remembering birthdays and Christmas. If you could play something for them, particularly remembering Violet, Mrs Maxwell and Nora, it would be so much appreciated and bring a little joy to them. Well, this we'll gladly do, Mrs Diggle, and I hope your friends in Ward 10 at Kirkham will enjoy a Spanish traditional tune, Have a Nagia. <laughs> Thank you. 
fine performance by the Carlton Main Frickley Colliery Band of a well-known Spanish traditional tune. When John Newton wrote the hymn Amazing Grace, little did he realise that some 250 years later it would be the top of the pops in Britain. And top of the pops it certainly was some two to three years ago, and requests continue to come in for this well-known tune. Mrs Coogan of Cosham in Hampshire writes for her daughter, Mrs Luffman, who is now recovering from an operation, and all their thanks to the doctors and nursing staff in E3 Ward at St Mary's Hospital, Milton, Portsmouth. A recent golden wedding anniversary is that of Mr and Mrs Jim and Evelyn Gillett of Tintwistle near Hadfield in Derbyshire. All your family send their love, Mr and Mrs Gillett. Writing from Sudbury Hill, Wembley in Middlesex, Mrs Irene Marshall greets her good friend, 92 years old, Mrs Cohen. A very good morning to you, Mrs Cohen. From the village of Seal in Kent, Mrs Alice Johnson lists a number of friends. I'm to include the Mrs Barbara and Annie Donachie of Dundee, also Mrs Jean Harbour of Hadley near Wellington in Shropshire, and Mrs Vigeon in Orpington Hospital. From Lost Withiel in Cornwall, Mrs Eve Page sends warmest thanks to all the nurses and staff at Athelston House in Bodmin. Mrs Page was there just recently recuperating. And from Scotland, I've news of a 98th birthday, that of Miss Mary Hunter of Darach Moniave in Dumfrieshire. Miss Hunter always listens to our programme, and this morning I'd like to send her the music of Amazing Grace with the love and good wishes of her friend Lily in Edinburgh. And from Norwich in Norfolk, Mr Edwin Gale sends a card on behalf of Ruth Moody, a sightless resident of Greenwood House in Peterborough. Ruth, I know, would like to share the music with her many sightless friends all over Britain. Despite the fact that she is blind, Mrs Robertson of Hendon NW4 is never anything but bright and cheerful. So say her son and daughter-in-law, John and Judith. And as they're both her nearest and dearest, they should know. Well, a very good morning to you, Mrs Robertson. All love from John and Judith, and our thanks for joining us on Sundays. The band are going to play Bobby's tune, uh, which is, in fact, a free arrangement of Bobby Shafto. Well, this music will also be welcomed by a great-grandfather who lives at number six flat Play Platt House Thiel in Berkshire. Love to him from granddaughter Rosemary and great-granddaughter Michelle. And Michelle is just two. What a lovely age. <laughs> Thank you. 
Bobby's tune, and as with many of our traditional songs, there are different versions and arrangements, no two alike. Bobby's tune tells the story of Bobby Shafto, that fine young chap from the north who went to sea with silver buckles on his knee. And talking of the sea brings us to a welcome letter from Bunty, Tim and Carol Fraser of Queensland Road, Boscombe, Bournemouth. They have an Irish setter, uh, Pedro by name, and every afternoon Bunty and Tim walk him along the top of the cliffs near their house. And from there they have the most lovely view over the bay and the beach, a view they always enjoy. A view that I've often enjoyed too, I may say. Uh, I know that part of the world well. Well, Bunty, Tim and Carol have asked me to include two good friends of theirs, Mrs Raper and Mrs Phillips. Mrs Raper of Drummond Road in Boscombe has had three spells in Poole Hospital and Mrs Phillips, an old friend of the family, will be listening at her home in North Devon, number five, Ashley Terrace in Ilfracombe. Well, a very good morning to you both, Mrs Raper and Mrs Phillips, and every good wish for a speedy recovery from Bunty, Tim and Carol. Well, from the coast of Hampshire, from Boscombe and Bournemouth, they send these tunes with their love, three romantic tunes, My Heart Tells Me, My Dearest Dear, and I'll See You Again.
My heart tells me, my dearest dear, and I'll see you again. It's Sunday the 14th of September, and if you've just tuned in to Radio 2, this is Dudley Savage wishing you all a very good morning. Every Sunday at this time, your requests are played on the organ and by a brass band. The requests that you send to As Prescribed at the BBC in Plymouth. Some weeks ago, I asked, who is our farthest listener? Well, there was a jolly good response. We heard from a ship at sea, from Holland, Scandinavia, from a husband and wife on holiday in a caravan in Spain, from widely separated places. Mr George Flett put pen to paper in North Scotland, in Wick, Caithness, some 800 miles from Plymouth. Well, thank you for writing, Mr Flett. And Anna Johnston wrote from Orkney. Anna wrote to say that she's working in the Balfour Hospital in Kirkwall, Orkney, and would like us to mention all the nursing staff at the Balfour and for the past and present staff and patients at the Luton and Dunstable Hospital, especially those from Ward 7. From the Orkneys to West Germany, my thanks to Mr Harold Dorr for writing from headquarters NAFI European Service, BFPO 40. And to a listener in Sweden, Mrs Vivi Ann Thorpe of 15130 Sodertalj, is that it? S-O-D-E-R-T-A-L-J-E in Sweden. Well, some 22 years ago, Mrs. Vivian Thorpe worked as a young girl in Tootingbeck Hospital, and she sends greetings, in her words, brightest greetings, to all the staff and patients there. And I've time to mention just one more card from Mr. Tommy Kapper, who wrote from Norderney, one of the Frisian islands off the coast of northern Germany. Well, Tommy sends love to his girlfriend, Caroline McGowan, and to everyone at home in Belfast. Well, I hope all our friends in these widely separated places will enjoy the medley of popular tunes.
some while ago, you may remember my mentioning dairy farms and the fact that music in the milking shed means placid cows and a better yield. Well, my remarks didn't go unnoticed. Several farmers wrote to me, and one of their fraternity, a Sussex farmer, agreed that music does content the cows. In the old days, he wrote, the cows would always wait for the music while you work programme. He also came up with an interesting fact. If we include slow pieces of music, it takes about half an hour longer to milk. The cows would seem to part with an extra pint or two only when lively tunes are included. Well, remembering that cheerful tunes result in more milk in the pail, let's include a well-known march for all our friends who listen in milking parlours on Sunday mornings. And I know that the march will also please Mr F.A. Henderson, who writes from Little Broughton, Cockermouth in Cumbria. Mr Henderson is disabled through an accident some years ago, and he's an outpatient at the local hospital, the West Cumberland Hospital at Hensingham. He sends his greetings and warmest thanks to all the doctors and nursing staff in G Ward. The band pick up their instruments to play Sons of the Brave. <laughs> Sons of the Brave, a popular march if ever there was. All too quickly to our closing item this morning, and I've three cards and letters to mention. Writing from Eardiston near Tenbury Wells in Worcestershire, Mrs Elsie Brennan sends grateful thanks to the eye specialist and all the nursing staff in Ward C3 at Kidderminster Hospital. I hope Miss Margaret McNaught may be listening in Monkmore Road in Shrewsbury, Shropshire. A very good morning to you, Miss McNaught. Warmest greetings and good wishes on your recent 100th birthday from your many friends in Scotland. Uh, incidentally, Mrs Mary Bond wrote on their behalf from Kelso in Roxburghshire. And to Mrs Ellen Wood, a patient in Boscombe Hospital, lots of love from her sister, Mrs Chatton of Southbourne, and sister-in-law, Mrs N. Wood of Elmer Sands in Sussex. <laughs> Thank you. 
of the hornpipe from Handel's Water Music. Well, time as a habit of pressing on, our time together has unfortunately run out. Well, I'd like to thank our friends from Yorkshire, the members of the Carlton Main Frickley Colliery Band, and their conductor, Robert Orton, for joining as prescribed this morning. Our thanks to them for their splendid variety of brass band music. Next Sunday morning, I hope to be dispensing more of your musical prescriptions for your friends in hospitals and at home. In the meantime, if you've a tune or a message you'd like included in the programme, then do please drop us a line. Requests to As Prescribed, BBC, Plymouth. Until next Sunday, this is Dudley Savage thanking you for listening and saying goodbye, everyone, and as always, take care. <laughs>